everybody, happy Wednesday. It is so slow right now. Oh my God, it's horrible. Uh, Jason Woods, welcome, thank you for joining. Uh, let's see, okay, that's every, if you join during a live stream, I will give you a shout out. Uh, I have a little bit of a, a, a uh, I don't have, I have a, I have, to, I have a hard out again at 4.15 today. Uh, I'm uh, meeting my dad actually, uh, so uh, I have to make sure that I'm not late for that. Uh, but uh, we have some really strong stories to talk about today. Nothing that warrants its own video, but still uh, uh, makes for a good morning movie. Uh, I, well, no, <laughs> I'm so used to morning movie news. Uh, makes for a good live stream. Uh, but yeah, so it's very slow right now. I'm very glad that there is the Fantastic Beasts trailer coming out tomorrow. I'm excited about that. And then thankfully the Batman will be next week. Uh, I wish they debuted the Thor trailer this week. We sure could have used it, uh, but maybe we'll get it next week. I know that it's soon, um, so I'm hoping that it's next week to go along with uh, to go along with the Batman. There should be some big trailers dropping to play in front of that movie, as we discussed yesterday. Uh, but it's so nice to see everybody. Uh, I'm also happy to tell you that Encanto won the BTT Movie Club poll. So that's what we'll be watching on Sunday if you're a BTT Movie Club member. You can either join live at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, or uh, we just started Pastor Madeline, or uh, it'll be available uh, to BTT Movie Club members whenever they would like to, 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 have, to press play and have me watch along with them. Uh, I have to order some special snacks. I'm excited. All right, so speaking of watch-alongs, let's get to the first story of the day. All right, boop. So No Way Home will finally be available for you to watch at home. It is, uh, I've seen many sites say that it's already broken the pre-sales record for them. Uh, I believe, I think I, in Movie Math I covered this, that the weekend that No Way Home came out in movie theaters, it was in the top 10 for pre-orders on iTunes. Hey, Nikki Millar. So it's obviously very, everyone's very excited about it. And they were ready. As you, as uh, Keith just said, hey, Andrew, thanks for joining. Uh, that meme, they shot the actual meme. Andrew Garfield, boy, if I were Tom Holland, I'd be like, whoa, wait a minute. I am the current Spider-Man. Why is Andrew Garfield getting so much attention? Fans love Andrew Garfield. He's beloved, but I don't know why he's in the middle. I don't know why he's in the middle. So uh, maybe he's because he's the tallest, Some because it makes a good triangle. Some of you, uh, I think I, some people pointed out in other photos. So maybe that's why. But still, it would have to be a very good reason like that to make me happy if I were Tom Holland or his agent. But they were ready. They, you know, kudos to the Sony publicity department for making sure they had that and saving it for something smart. They were like, I know what we'll save it for. We'll save it for uh, the, the announcement of the, of the release. Now, another great thing about this is that because Sony does not have a streaming service, it's only going to be available. Well, it's great for me. It's great for me and the watch along, but there will not be, it will not be available early or, uh, you know, at the same time on a studio streaming service. You know, now Disney Plus, Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers release their stuff immediately on their service. And it's like this tiered release. So it's hard for everybody to have it at the same time. This is going to be old school where everybody in the world will, it's not going to Netflix first either, Lloyd. You have to purchase it on March 22nd if you want to get it on digital. Netflix has a later window. Hey, Jerome Wanless. This will eventually go to Disney Plus, but it will go to Netflix first as a streaming service. But if you want to watch it on March 22nd, uh, you're gonna have to get it, you're gonna have to buy a digital copy, which means we can do an old school watch along where everybody in the world will be getting this movie at the same time. So we can all watch it together. It's gonna to be fantastic. We're gonna do a watch along at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 22nd. Why so early in the day? Well, I tried to pick a time so that the most people could join in. Not only do I have to keep in mind the East and West Coast, but I also need to keep in mind our friends in Europe, you know, uh, you know the UK time zone, and also a few uh, of the other European countries who are six hours ahead. I wish that I could factor in 
uh, you know, all of our friends in India and other parts of the uh, of the globe. But you know, I had you know, I have to pick something that you know fits the the most and works with my schedule. So if you can stay up super late or maybe watch it in the morning, that would be cool too. And we're gonna have a really, 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 really good time. And it's gonna be available for everyone. I was, it's not gonna be the BTT Movie Club viewership uh, uh, movie night of the month. That'll be a separate private movie night. And what do you guys think? I wanted to ask your opinion on this. I was thinking of making it available for just this one time, hey, Rafael Martinez, to only for subscribers to comment. You, didn't, you don't have to be a member because it's such a big movie. I was a little concerned that it would make this, the chat go by like, like ridiculous, <laughs> but I could put like a really big lag on it. But you guys, uh, you know, you guys that can comment are members. So do you think for this one time, do you think that I should do it for subscribers in the comment section or do you think I should keep it for members? I'll put a, I'll put a time limit on the, on the chat. Slow mode, you know, I'll put like a crazy slow mode, like five minutes. Some people think it might be too many. Okay, yeah, I can see. I think we'll do members. We'll keep it members, you guys. I think you guys bring up a lot of good points. So we'll do members-only comments as usual, but anyone can watch with their own digital copy of the movie. So we're going to have, like, a really, really good time. And it's going to be so much fun. So mark your calendar for uh, March 22nd at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Anyone can watch along with their own digital copy of the film and members may comment. Uh, and you know, anyone can join. Look, look uh, Statuesque just joined, just upgraded to Movie Club, thank you. So I think, uh, I think that this will make for a good chat where people don't have to feel like it's too crazy and you, you, know, you can really feel like you're a part of the conversation. So I did want to talk very briefly about the extras. I thought the most interesting thing is there was a rumor going around, and I'd heard it too, um, there was somebody going around DMing people. They might have DMed other reporters saying that, oh, that there was going to be extra footage that was going to be maybe released. In, hey, Rustamon, that was going to be maybe released in theaters or, uh, you know, or with the home release. And I was like, I got to check. I mean, I didn't know who this person was. So I was like, I, and they had like um, a username that said they were in the business you know, their profile on Twitter, but I was like, I got to check with my sources and no one could verify this. So I never reported it. But I'm wondering if maybe some other sites decided to just go with it, you know, because, you know, there's always that pressure to be first, you know? So I had, so I, I wondered where that rumor came from because it's not happening. They're not doing that. But I thought that was interesting. Uh, so, so it's interesting. <laughs> but for extras, they do have very good extras. Now, I think... Oh, physical copies will are, physical copies won't be available, physical media won't be available till April 12th. Uh, they really want everybody to get the digital. So, uh, you know, they're really gonna push for you to, to make that purchase. I do think they did a nice job with the extras for this. It involves a bloopers and gag reel, uh, an alternate reality Easter egg thing, which is basically doing what YouTubers do, but they did it on the video. For those of you who, I guess, you know, <laughs> didn't watch all the YouTube videos. Seven behind the scenes featurettes, featurettes like action choreography, uh, a multiverse of miscreants. Uh, we wanted a Sinister Six with alliteration. Uh, a spectacular spider journey with Tom Holland, Enter Strange, Graduation Day, Realities Collide, Spiders Unite. Uh, whoever came up with the titles for these is really good. Uh, weaving John Watts Web. Oh, I love it. Then two special panels with the villains talking and then also with the spiders talking, the three Spider-Men. Uh, then three stories from the Daily Bugle, Spider Menace Strikes Again, Spider Sycophant, and Web of Lies. These are hilarious. And then two stunt scenes pre-visualized, uh, the apartment fight and the shield fight. To release pre is, is a very interesting new thing. Uh, hey, Ryan B. is a very interesting thing to add to a public discussion. But I mean, so many leaks are coming from pre -vis, We all know what they are right now. Uh, but I think that's really smart. And if you get the DVD, so those extras are on 4K, uh, Ultra, and Blu-ray, and digital. If you buy any of those, you'll get all of those. But if you just buy the DVD, you, you, just, get the, you just get two behind-the-scenes featurettes 
a spectacular spider journey with Tom Holland in graduation day. So it's kind of a waste of money to buy it on DVD, considering how little you're going to get for, you know, such a little bang for your buck. But I think that sounds pretty good. I think if I had to guess, there's two things. They're either not going to release a, a director's cut. I can understand that because, you know, you want to have, you know, you, hey, Noah, you don't, I mean, I think the movie's so iconic. You don't want separate versions of it floating around and people arguing which one they prefer. Uh, or they could be maybe milking it for another release. Uh, you know, I don't, I wouldn't blame Sony. I think there'd be a little bit of a backlash if they did that, making, asking people basically to pay for the movie twice. But that wouldn't be the case because you'd be paying for the extra scenes if they were to do that. And I think everybody would complain, but then everybody would also purchase it. So I, that's funny, Millie. You want the VHS? That's great. I, I would assume around the same time. Um, but so that's what I think, you know, maybe they'll do it maybe for like, I don't know, Christmas? Like for Christmas, that would be a great, that would be a great, I mean, who wouldn't want that in their stocking, right? So I don't blame them. And I think that they are, you know, you're getting the movie. Uh, and I think that you're getting an incredible amount of extras behind the scenes. I'm going to purchase it for the watch along. Who here is going to buy it? I guess I want to know if you're going to go digital or are you going to wait? Are you hardcore enough that you're going to wait till April 12th to get this on physical media? Mika, Deadpool did re-release the same movie, but nobody ever talked about that re-release, really. A lot of digitals. Lloyd's like, okay, I'll buy it. We're going to have such a good time on the watch along. It's going to be great. Skinny boy German is like, I'm waiting for the 12th. See all you suckers on the 12th. That's great. Uh, okay, so that's the first story of the day, and I'm very excited. It's going to be a great time. And, you know, you can also now understand why Moon Knight waits, waited so long because they have a lot of releases in there. They have um, West Side Story. They have Turning Red, which I just watched last night, and I can review uh, two Mondays. Uh, it's coming Monday is the Batman, then the Monday after is Turning Red. Um, uh, and then of course now this, which, you know, Disney is uh, a part of, so they want to give it space. Like, and also it would just completely steamroll Moon Knight. So why, why deal with that? So I think it's all, you know, thank God we need stuff to happen. It's been a rough February. It's been like too slow January and February. I have not appreciated it. This should have been, you know, booked better. There's just a whole, huge hole in February. There was no show. All right. So that is the first story of the day. Second story of the day. Boop. All right. Tom Brady has retired, and he's already working on the next chapter of his career. Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood. Very exciting. And I think this is interesting because LeBron James, another famous athlete, has found, found quite a, a large amount of success in Hollywood. You know, people like to, to, to razz LeBron James about Space Jam, but the guy's still turning out an incredible amount of content, and a lot of it is doing quite well. Even Space Jam 2 did, you know, pretty decent, respectable box office numbers. So LeBron is a big, has become a big force in Hollywood. So I can understand Tom Brady going, why not me as well? But don't worry, Tom Brady's not going to jump into the deep end of the pool. He's instead going to dip a toe into Hollywood as he produces a movie, uh, but also will have a small role in it. So he is working with Endeavor Content, which I'm sure is produ Endeavor Content is producing this, but I'm sure also representing many of the people who are in it. And I'm sure they also represent Tom Brady. So he's putting together a movie, and it's going to be made for Paramount, and he's going to have a small, I don't know how small his role is, but he's not a lead. So here, it's, it's a true story. It's based on a true story about four older women who, are, who were big fans of Tom Brady, and they had, went on a crazy road trip to the Super Bowl in 2017, which was in t uh, Houston, Texas, to see Tom Brady play uh, when he was back playing for the Patriots. And, the, and, you know, Paramount has had a lot of success with these older women movies like Book Club and First Wives Club. So it's going to be Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda. Some of you have already pointed out, like Grace and Frankie, the Netflix show that they starred in for several seasons, which did very well. Then they're also going to add Rita Moreno, who, of course, is a big name right now because of uh, West Side Story coming back. And then Sally Field. That's like a pretty strong cast. I don't know, but this would do well in theaters. I would maybe consider putting this like on... Uh, on the streaming, like on Paramount Plus, but I think it's a pretty solid package. And I think it's a good way 
for Tom Brady to introduce himself in a way that doesn't seem too conceited. So yeah, he's playing himself. They're going to, you know, at the end of the movie, he'll come in and be like, hey, everybody, and I'll, let's see how he does, you know, but I'm glad he's not, you know, he shouldn't challenge himself too much. As some of you pointed out, he's a little wooden, even in real life. So, you know, acting is difficult. I think, I thought LeBron James, though, LeBron James, like, first meaty role was in Trainwreck, the Amy Schumer, Bill Hader movie, and I actually thought he did a really good job. Uh, I thought he did a very strong job there, actually. Uh, so, you know, let's see how Tom Brady does and if more acting is in his future. But it sounds like he's definitely going to be producing. If you're wondering who that other guy is, that's Kyle Marvin, an actor who also co-scripted this movie, and he's going to direct it. So I think it sounds pretty good. I mean, who here would watch this? I would watch this. I mean, also, I mean not only because it's a great cast, but I do have a curiosity factor as to how Tom Brady will do. And, you know, Tom Brady could produce all kinds of content. Lisa says he's not a terrible actor, but he's no Peyton Manning. That's pretty funny. Peyton Manning's, you know, was he the one who did the Emily in Paris thing on SNL? I thought that was pretty funny. A decent number of you would check it out. Except for Lloyd Lester. He's like, no way. But I, uh, and Dane O'Leary. Some, some of you do not want to, to, take, to catch this ball. But I think it sounds pretty good. Uh, Catwoman says, I'm, I'm from Massachusetts, so I must watch it. That's funny. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a good idea, and I think it's smart to try and follow in LeBron James's footsteps. I think Tom Brady would be silly not to. I think that his past with Bridget Moynihan isn't so great, but she seems to have gotten over it, so uh, let's see what kind of career he can carve out for himself in Hollywood. All right, so that is the second story of the day. Hold on. Third story of the day. Boom, baby. Aaron Pierre has joined the cast of Blade in an undisclosed but highly coveted role. Apparently, though, every role in this movie is highly coveted because they said that Delroy Lindo's role was also highly coveted, but that they wanted Delroy Lindo from the beginning. Although, if you saw him in that Spike, uh, Spike Lee movie, uh, you know, the, the one about... Uh, the Five Bloods, he was incredible, Delroy Lindo, in that movie. So I'm glad that even though he didn't get a lot of awards stuff off of that, Delroy Lindo got to be in Blade. So that's the cast, joining Mahershala Ali. And now Aaron Pierre, this was a role that, you know, oh, Elliot, you're ahead of me there a little bit. That's a good point. But uh, this was a role that was also very highly coveted, that they wanted a lot of people to, uh, you know, a lot of people wanted it. But Aaron Pierre was the one who got it in the end. He has mesmerizing eyes. He was an old, as uh, Mika just pointed out, he's also on Underground Railroad and Krypton, the Krypton series, short-lived Krypton series. Uh, I thought in old, he actually did a very, very good job. Uh, he has a very cool look. Uh, he looks like an athlete or a, 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 or a musician, right? Uh, so I, I, I thought that he was actually cameoing. I didn't know he was a professional actor when I saw old, and I was like, wow, he's really good. And I think he has, uh, I think he's not only a good actor, but I think he has like a really fantastic look. Now, what's this Mufasa talk? Yeah, that's right, he was mid-sized sedan, Dan O'Leary. That was very funny. Uh, now, he has actually also been cast for Barry Jenkins' Lion King prequel as Mufasa, the voice of young Mufasa. And so that means he already has a relationship with Disney. And Disney, of course, would love their Lion King prequel to do well. So, of course, they would love to be able to say, hey, Aaron Pierre is the, one of the leads. And he's also, of course, in our new Blade movie. You know, studios are going a little bit back to the studio system where they really want to play up and, you know, book, you know, book solid their talent uh, so that they can, you know, make them a bigger star and therefore more valuable to the studio. So I think it's a good choice. Oh, I shall see you at the monorail. Is that a Disney reference? Oh, I love, love Disney. I'll definitely see you at the monorail. But I think this sounds like a, a good thing. One of you pointed out maybe um, that maybe Dr. Oh, Denzel O'Neill said maybe he could be playing Dr. Voodoo. Uh, I think that would be an excellent choice. Uh, he certainly has a very cool look and I think he would be great to play someone who is in the mystic arts. Uh, Brother Voodoo is alongside Doctor Strange and Wanda, and we've been hearing rumors of Doctor Voodoo uh, coming for a while now. Uh, that would be fantastic. That would be just excellent. Uh, David, I'm so glad you made today's live stream. But this sounds very good. Uh, Bassam Tariq is going to be directing, and you know I would love it if maybe they played up. Uh, Bassam Tariq has a, a history with telling some Muslim stories, and of course, um, Mershala Ali is a very devoted Muslim, and I think it would be really important and an interesting step to maybe highlight that as part of 
Blade's background. So I like this. This sounds really good. The cast is incredibly strong. I'm excited to hear more about the movie. My only concern is I hope that Aaron Pierre is not playing a villain. That's my only concern that I would have, that he might be playing a villain and that he maybe wouldn't be around very long. Because, you know, Marvel villains are never very evil and they never stick around very long either. So that's always unfortunate. So I hope that he's just a very cool character. So that's why I would prefer Dr. Voodoo, because then he could be in a whole bunch of Marvel projects. That would make me very happy. I'd be like, oh, go meet Wanda now. Go meet Dr. Strange. This would be fantastic. Uh, I, I would absolutely love that. Uh, yeah, uh, A-Rod, I think Kit Harrington is going to be in Blade based on the end credit scene. I hope he's in Blade more than he was in Eternals, because that was ridiculous. All right, so it's 4.13. I can go to like 4.20. I, you know, I just gave my, uh, I, I still won't be late to meet my dad. All right, so uh, Dr. Voodoo is good, Keith. Dr. Voodoo is a very cool character, and for a while he was the Sorcerer Supreme. All right, so let's do five minutes of Ask Me Anything until 4.18. Hey, FC, I'm, uh, I'm so glad that's such a nice thing to say. I haven't heard anything about Werewolf by Night or Echo casting just yet. Brett Crandall says, any Wiccan or Hulkling tea? All right, I'll give you a little tea. It's a tiny little bit of tea. I'll just say that I would suspect, I would guess that the twins, Wanda's twins, are probably in Doctor Strange 2 more than you would suspect, which is pretty darn cool. The children version, the kids version from the show. Very exciting. Raphael said, Evangeline Lilly hurt Ant-Man 3. I don't know, man. I, I really wish she would stop, you know. Just, that's if I were Kevin Feige. I'd be like, please just stop. Caleb Griffin, there is a rumor going around that John Watts is going to direct an episode of a Star Wars show, but that hasn't been confirmed by anybody. Oh, Jose, uh, uh, um, Evangeline Lilly has been making very strong anti-vaccine uh, comments, vaccine mandate comments. Michael Massena says, classic movie you've never seen. You know, I've been thinking of, it's funny you bring that up, I've been trying to think if I should watch From Here to Eternity. That is the rare classic movie I have not seen. Uh, I often like to go through um, AFI lists for ideas of what to watch, and I'm like, I've seen everything. And then there's occasionally they're like, you haven't seen From Here to Eternity. I'm like, I don't really want to watch it. So I haven't watched it. Dana O'Leary says, Grace, what are your expectations for Jordan Peele's Nope? Uh, it looks very well done so far. I think that it's going to make or break him. I think that he needs a tiebreaker between us, which I think nobody really liked the ending, and uh, Get Out, which of course everybody thought was a masterpiece. So the question is, can he do a repeat on Get Out? Can he, can he do, and I really loved Get Out, and I love the first half of Us. Uh, so I think that's really what, what, what's at stake when it comes to Nope. But I think everybody's gonna watch it. Uh, Ryan B says, thoughts on Harley Quinn live action future. You know what I would do if I were controlling it? I would green light a live action version of the Harley Quinn animated series because I think that the cast actually kind of looks a little bit like their characters and I think that would be a fun hour of TV. You know, it would be like a cool world kind of situation where they could just go into live action. I think that would be funny. Uh, thoughts on Disney, Pl uh, Josh says, thoughts on Disney Plus starting filming on Percy Jackson and the Olympians starting on June 1st. I was, one, I was like the first person to report that, but yeah, I feel good about it. Do you think we will get a lot of set photos starting in June of the entire cast? A look at Camp Half-Blood. You know, a lot of people think that Percy Jackson, including Disney, is going to be the new Harry Potter. I got to tell you, I don't totally see it. I think, I'm not sure. I mean, let's see. I'd love to be pleasantly surprised, but I think it's going to skew a little bit too young to be, I mean, Harry Potter, but Harry Potter had the teachers, I think, and the world of the school. I remember when the first Harry Potter came out, um, not only in my family had ever read the books, but we just liked the coziness of the world of Hogwarts. Uh, so, I mean, I just, I, I don't know if Percy Jackson has a cozy factor. So we'll see. I mean, I, Evan, I know it has a big fan base, but I just wonder if it's going to seem like a tween show.
Jacob Herrera says the Proud family has some pretty adult jokes, like wow. You know, I have to say, I ha my ha hat's off to the Proud family, which is debuting, I think, well, two episodes today, and then I think it's a weekly release. I don't know if they're doing one or two episodes every week, but it trended today. That's very impressive. Now, the question is, will it trend every week that it releases? Bel Air trended when it dropped, which was fantastic, because I think that's a great show too, but it hasn't trended since. So the question is, I'm very impressed that the Proud family trended when it debuted, but now the next test is, can it trend every Wednesday? If it does, that would be absolutely incredible. And hats off to Disney for, for being able to do that. I mean, it would be another argument for the weekly release strategy. And Netflix is continuing to wonder what should they do. Tovi, I've watched six episodes of Raised by Wolves, and I check every day to see if they put some more screeners in my account. And they have not. I'm very upset about it. That should be a drop. I think Raised by Wolves as a weekly release just isn't working. It's really hard to know what to do, though. I was talking about this with somebody yesterday, and it's so hard with weekly releases and stuff because, you know, you know people are watching or, or binging. Like, there's so much content now that I find that people are watching stuff on their own schedule, and so people aren't watching stuff all at the same time. So there's no conversation, because you talk to someone and you're like, what are you watching? And they're like, oh, well, I'm watching this. And you're like, oh, well, I haven't started that yet. Are you watching this? And you're like, no, I'm waiting to binge it. And so everyone's like, I got no one to talk to this about. And it makes it difficult for me, because there, it's, it's the same effect on coverage. So it's difficult. It's like really hard. They have to fix, they have to find a way to make this work, because I feel like, a lot of content is just dying on the vine or just going into a black hole of oblivion. And it's horrible because a lot of it's really good. Like Pam and Tommy. Ain't no one talking about Pam and Tommy. Chris, I watched the whole thing. I was able to binge it in 24 hours. Oh, okay. Well, my last question of the day will be Elliot's about the Oscar situation. I thought that that was really a horrible thing to do, uh, to take out some, so many categories, including things like makeup and costume design and production design. Those are huge categories that are very big for a movie. Like Mad Max won most of those categories and didn't win in other ones. So it would not, a movie wouldn't have the same presence on Oscar night if you were to shortchange those awards. I feel that you know either you're watching the Oscars or you're not. I don't think the extra 20 minutes to do those awards are gonna make or break anybody. Uh, I think that the Oscars always have a problem and they're always trying to come up with clever, clever ways to make people more interested in watching them, but it's absurd. It's beyond stupid. And I think that the problem is that they didn't pick uh, good hosts or they, I mean, I, I really like the hosts that they pick for the most part, but I feel like they're not a good fit with this year. Uh, and I think they needed stronger hosts to offset a lot of movies that nobody cares about. Uh, so I don't know. I, I think it was, was it Seth Rogen who said nobody cares about industry awards for any other industry? Why would people care about them for the Oscars? Uh, but it's a shame because if you look back to when Avatar and those kind of movies were being nominated, people cared very much about the Oscar. So there was a moment when people did care. Um, and I think, I think that it's, I think it's not a, not good hosts. You know, I think that yeah, Toby, Andrew, and Tom would have made this whole thing a not a problem. And maybe it's the fracturing, maybe the fracturing of audiences. Maybe because they're so, you know, we're not all on the same page anymore. And that might be affecting the, the Oscars as well. Like what I was just talking about with streaming. All right, I do have to go. I don't want to make my dad, I don't want to miss my dad. I better get going. All right, everybody, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Harry Potter trailer. Okay, bye, everybody.